here on the platform, we celebrate freedom of speech by getting a couple of people in who aren't afraid to exercise it. Kicking it off for the year 2023. We've got Christine Rankin out of Taupo, a uh, former top bureaucrat, former politician and someone <laughs> always prepared to uh, speak their mind. And the man who thinks he can balance the books uh, yeah. at Auckland yeah. Council, Morris, <laughs> Morris Williamson, uh, welcome to you both. Happy New Year. Good morning. Happy New Year to you both. So I thought today we'd just do a dive deep analysis of the National Party caucus reshuffle. Anything else you want to talk about or not? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's so exciting. Actually, it, it, it was good news, but then it got overshadowed, didn't it? It did somewhat. It did somewhat. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Morris, uh, firstly, I'll start with you, Morris. Are you surprised that the captain of the team of five million has walked off the field and left us to play with ourselves? Uh, oh, well, goodness me, I don't think that's a good thing to say. Um, uh, no, I'm not surprised, Sean, because I think the writing's been on the wall for a while now. I think um, you, you can see from the polling, and I noticed that David Farrell's company, Courier, have said that the poll they're releasing today for the first time ever, their unfavourables were higher than favourables. That's the first time in the history of their polling for them. And I think that that's a fairly uh, strong uh, impression you get from the electorate. When I came back from living in the States uh, by the time of the last election, uh, everyone just saying, look, what a great job, what a wonderful uh, Prime Minister. A uh, huge number of National Party voters voted Labour they were on an absolute, you know, floating in the sky. Uh, and now I only hear the opposite, that it's just, you know, they've failed to deliver on this, they've failed to deliver on that, they're taking away uh, our rights as individuals, they're, they're dividing us. I think the biggest concern I have expressed to me is how divisive they've been coming and sort of splitting our society apart. Mm -hmm. Christine, and, uh, uh, yeah, well, let, let's let me, Christine, Christine, answer that question. Sure. Were you surprised, Christine? Did you fall off your chair when you found out that Jacinda had thrown in the towel? I didn't, like, I mean, unlike Morris, I wasn't picking her. I, I thought she would stay in there to the bitter end, but I knew that it would be really, really hard for her to lose. Um, and I'm sure that that is part of her decision making. But no, uh, I, it, it actually came as a surprise to me. I wasn't expecting it yesterday. I wondered what would happen just before the election, that she might resign because she wouldn't want to lose. But the country's a mess. I mean, Morris has said it all. People are very, very angry. And the reality is they're not allowed to talk about the things that they're deeply worried about, like the division in our country. And you're not allowed to talk about it because the moment you do, you get labelled. If you disagree You're a racist. Thing, you're not you're following treaty guidelines yep. on news yep. media. Yeah. Ab oh, God, <laughs> they're unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a pretty sad state of affairs and somebody else is going to win hands down. Yeah. All right. A group. Uh, yeah, <laughs> a, a, a group. Um... Look, also, I guess we're now going through this process of, of sort of assessing what did Jacinda Ardern mean, what she is saying to her a sinner. Um, predictably, a whole lot of people have been saying, oh, she was a victim of terrible misogyny. I think Sam Neill, you know, a couple of bottles of two paddocks Pinot in, and he's saying, oh, it's all those misogynists on Twitter and Facebook. They, they, they've brought my, my lovely Prime Minister down. That's kind of simplistic, isn't it, guys? Oh, it, look, t totally. Th that's where the racism or the misogyny label just get used so badly. It means that if you criticise a Prime Minister for their poor performance and they're a male, it goes untouched. But if they happen to have been a female, then you're misogynist. But you're doing the exact same criticism of them for their performance. Look, I, I don't think that it's worth discussing personalities. I don't think it's worth discussing whether she was lovely or she was nice or whatever. The thing about a Prime Minister that you hire them for, that you pay them for, is for delivery of outcomes and performance. And on any one of those standards, this government has failed miserably to deliver. They've talked a great talk. They were going to build this many hundred thousand houses. They were going to do this for child poverty. They were going to do this for this. And they're... And the reason why it's all coming home to roost right now, Sean, is that New Zealanders are sick of hearing announcements about what's going to happen and have been looking for some actual runs on the board and the runs on the board just aren't there. Yeah, 
Do you agree, Christine, this is a failure of a yeah. government and a failed Prime Minister? Absolutely. And if, if it's misogyny, well, are women misogynist? Because women are saying exactly the same thing Correct. as men Correct. are about this Prime Minister. So that just doesn't make any sense at all. Um, look, it is. It's just a terrible mess. And I don't think we can wait until October. I don't... What, what mayhem is the Maori caucus going to create between now and October? Because there's never going to be another chance for years and years and years. So what will they do? Because there's a lot in the pipeline. Yeah. Christina, and thanks. I was going to move on to this point, Ned. So you would agree, really, the circumstances since that 2020 election have changed so dramatically. We've got a, a different Prime Minister than the one that we voted for, and whether or not technically we do, we did. She's gone, the party's in free fall, and you would argue, Christine, that it's time to um, go to the polls. It needs to happen in the next couple of months. This is just ridiculous. They no longer have a mandate. Look, they've done lots of things that they didn't have a mandate for just because they got such a huge vote. We didn't know about most of the things that they were going to do that we hate. So they haven't had a mandate for that, and they shouldn't have a mandate to carry on. Well, well they should seek a new one. I'm not going to uh, prejudge well, the outcome yes. of, of an election. Do you think it is early That's election right. time, Morris? And do you think the Prime Minister was wrong and it was slightly odd that she announces an election date, then resigns. Yeah, I, I found that quite interesting. I guess it was to do with so that she could time when she leaves and not see if the date hadn't been set, you would trigger a by-election. With the Mount Albert thing, the yeah. Date. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so that the was totally all about it. here. Well, that's what it seems <laughs> like, because you'd have thought that you would have thought the incoming Prime Minister uh, would be the person who would be determining what date an election is held, given it won't affect Jacinda Ardern in any way, because she won't even stay as a Member of Parliament in Mount Albert without triggering a by-election. So can I just make one really important point about 2020 election? They got a huge vote, but I tell you, it was overwhelming that I got from people, friends and family and neighbours and so on. When I arrived back in New Zealand, people said to me, oh, we're voting Labour for the first time. I said, why? What on earth has happened? And they said, I tell you what, National cannot win. It's uh, in the doldrums. It's had three leaders within three months shooting itself in every foot, arm, leg and so on and having MPs resigning because sending dick pics and everything else. So they can't get in. They can't get in. So now we've got to look at it. Do we want a Labour Greens coalition government or do we want a Labour outright where they don't have to rely on the Greens? And the vast bulk of people here in Pakaranga, Howick, Bucklands Beach, who would normally be National Party voters, and remember National only won the party vote in one electorate. Yeah, that's right. Epsom. Yeah. And the reason why those National Party voters like Reef Fish all moved over to give Labour their vote wasn't because it was support for Labour. It was to make sure that there wasn't a Labour Greens coalition government. Yeah. yeah. So do you say snap election, Morris, or early election? Yeah, yeah, why not? I mean, for goodness sake, the place is now almost in a shambles. You do not want to go through, I think you made your earlier interview with a person said, you don't want to repeat what's been going on in the UK where they change prime ministers yeah. more than they have coffee breaks. So I just think it's now time. It, 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 their, their mandate has been sort of eroded so badly by poor performance. The polls indicate that they are, they're going to face a 1990 wipeout. And you imagine what those backbenchers who are all sitting there on MP salaries are thinking... You know, their list will almost be zero in terms of people getting through on the list, and some of their seats will just get annihilated. So they've either got to try and minimise the collateral damage and get away as early as quickly, or it'll just keep spiralling down. Sean, you were around in 1990. Yeah. Uh, they got rid of Jeffrey Palmer. They put Mike <laughs> Moore in with the last about six weeks to go. And what they were just trying to do was minimise that sort of collateral damage. Yeah. Yeah, Mike gave it a crack, though. I must say it was one of the most bizarre election campaigns I ever covered. I ended up in Tikawiti <laughs> taking the concession call from Mike Moore because Jim Bolger was stuck at the farm. One of the kids had parked his limo in. Um, <laughs> now, can I just say that I think National hasn't got the, the big job it had ahead of it now because really it's going to just be a free-for-all because... They've sleep, sleepwalked to victory, Christine. I, 
Yeah, a lot of my contemporaries, which I've never, never heard them say before, they do not trust this time that National's going to change back the things that they think are wrong, and they're voting Act. They're voting Act in bucket loads. And I have never, you know, I mix in National Party circles. That's where my heart lies. Yeah. And I am amazed to find how many people are voting Act. So it's going to be easier for National, but I'll tell you what, they better deliver on those things that people are terrified about. Yeah. Uh, I yeah, short, short, I'm hearing the exact same thing. I can promise you I'm hearing that exact same thing. They want National to be the government, but they want them to be firm, solid and fixed on getting rid of the nonsense that's occurred, repealing this, yeah. stand up for things that they think are wrong and get them out, gone, that'll be gone in the first hundred days. Yep. Uh, what they don't want is sort of a, li- a limp-wristed sort of, oh, well, you know, if we're better than they exactly. are, I hope you'll vote for us. Yeah. But, but exactly. I'm sorry, that has been um, Luxon's campaign strategy, he's trying to photo op his way to victory and I hate to say no, it, no, I think, it I seems think that's to unfair. have worked. It seems and to I think that's unfair. I think, he, I think his advisors will be giving him advice that most of them always do to leaders of the opposition in a situation like this. You don't need to go out with too much. You don't need to go out and say too much because the others mm-hmm. are absolutely self-destructing before your very eyes. And so the more that you make yourself the target on your head and so on, the more you take away the the sort of blistering attacks that are going on to the sitting government. So I I, I think there is an element of, uh, I say, part of a plan to not be too uh, bold in anything. I'd prefer it the other way. As you know, I'm one of these people who prepared to bloody call a spade a spade and take the consequences. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I suspect... suspect You and I could do it, (laughs) Morris. We could, we could. We yeah. could do it. Okay, who do we think, guys, and it may be purely academic and it's a temporary appointment, uh, who do we think the new Prime Minister, the new leader of the Labour Party is going to be and why, Christine? As long as it's not Nanaya Mahuta, I actually don't care because they're not going to be there for very long. I, I, I just, I don't care. I don't think it matters to me in any way, shape or form. It just can't be her. And surely to God, they're not serious when people are throwing her name around. Well, she she is the person who came forward and said, I'll stand, which I <laughs> think belies that the Maori caucus and, and Three Waters and co-governance did have something to do with the Prime Minister's decision, with Jacinda Ardern's decision oh, to, to step down. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh, look, I, I think the dream ticket would be Nanaya with Willie Jackson as the deputy. I <laughs> you are an be... evil, bad man. <laughs> no, that's what I, I'm actually doing. I, I'm doing phoning around this morning trying to get that to happen. I think it'd be a dream ticket. <laughs> well, I guess the the geez, that would yeah, that would focus the country uh, somewhat, wouldn't it? What? Oh, whoever it is, whoever it is, I can't, I've heard you lost for words. I can't think of anything worse, but if being Chris Hipkins, Kerry Allen, waiting till October the 14th to be put out of my misery as a lame duck Prime Minister. So I'm going to come and say, I think we're going to have an earlier election than that. I really yeah. do. Right. I do think that's I on the cards. You're right. Uh, and then I, I think it'll. I think these things have a tendency to sort of have a life of their own and just evolve to a point where there is no alternative. And uh, I don't know whether either of you read the Rachel Smalley NBR article before Christmas, but she said she was prepared to bet her house on the fact that Jacinda Ardern would go early in the new year. Yeah, and yeah. I thought well, when I read the article, no, I thought I that's a big call. That's a big call, uh, yeah. Rachel. Better and, than um, that, platform columnist and head of the Democracy Project, Bryce Edwards, don't forget, wrote in October. In October okay. that she okay. was going to go. So he is at the moment... Well, there you go. There ...number you go. one, you know, political soothsayer in, the, in, in this country. And he also yeah. pointed out, while we don't bet on elections here, the odds of Labor winning in the Australian bookies market, they've, um, they've halved. They're yeah. paying like but $3.80 Sean, just, for an election win, Labor, at the moment. Just, just let me, if I can, just make that point to you, because I've been inside caucuses both when we've been on the winning wave and all we have to do is just go to the election and we're going to get there like in 1990. And I've also been on a losing wave like in 1999. No matter what you do, you keep dropping by the day. And I used to go up to Premier House at night and meet with Jenny Shipley and other senior ministers and we'd plan our day for the morrow and what we would do for press releases and statements. And the next night we'd meet, we'd get polling and we'd drop another 2%. And so it just becomes to a point where it's self-fulfilling. You get into that vicious, vicious circle and it just starts to go down the gurgler. And so 
I think it'll almost happen as a sort of a, a natural process of an early election will, will unfold out of this. Yeah. Um, meantime, and look, this is the other thing in the context of this. We've got a recession coming. Grant Robertson, poor bugger, has to get a budget out um, no. that will try and get the country through the, the, this rough time. Things could get worse for Labor, couldn't they, Christine? Oh, oh, I think it's absolutely inevitable. It's going to get worse now, day by day and week by week, which is why we've got to have an election. That, that, this is just a hell journey for someone who's going to end up leading them if it goes through to October. Yeah, yeah. So, and a question you need, a question you need to bring up now is wh why would Grant Robertson not want to put his name forward? Uh, he knows what's going on, and it's more obvious. That's right. Awesome. That's right. Yeah. That's right. You don't, you don't want to become captain of a sinking ship type thing. Yeah, and because he was he was always being mentioned, and he was always uh, smiling, and also about he would be the person that would take over. And everyone thought as soon as the announcement came, well, that's Grant Robertson now going to. And he just says straight away, no. Now, no. strangely enough, and for some think, reason, what? I never thought Grant, but I do think Grant might appoint himself, or in a strange way, become the, if you like, the preserver of the core of the Labor Party, and yeah. I think that's the role yeah. he now sits in. The guy well, Mike who, Moore did in 1990. Yeah, 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 exactly like that. That he holds on to what is ever is left of the Labor Party and makes sure that it rises phoenix-like from the ashes at some stage, if it ever can. One of Mike Moore, one of Mike Moore's funny lines in 1990 was he said, "I was told yesterday, cheer up, things could be worse." So I cheered up, and sure enough, things <laughs> got worse. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 as you're harking back to that, I can remember being, I think, in Mungaree in a school hall when Mike was giving one of his speeches. And I can remember, I think, turning to the late John, John Armstrong and raising my eyebrows. Just in the middle of the speech, Mike says, rice, tapioca, Europe. Think about it. <laughs> and we did. And no one had any idea what the hell he was on about. Uh, they really didn't. I still don't. That's because you're not an intellectual. That's because oh. you're not an intellectual. Neither, neither was Mike. That was a nice thing about him. Hey, look, <laughs> um, where is Winston Peters in all this? What does this mean for Winston, who was showing every, you know, as a corpse, he was showing every chance of rising from the dead towards the end of last year? I'm not sure, and I'm hoping to look at this next week. He said I wouldn't do a deal with a Labour Party and he seemed to be saying it was a Dern he didn't trust. She's gone now. Does that give him wiggle room? I see Maeve told Thomas Coughlin that no, no, he still wouldn't do a deal. I think it pushes, this pushes Winston Peters to some irrelevancy when we know that Labor are going to lose. I don't well, think... Well, I'm going to say I disagree with that. I'll tell you why I disagree with it. Uh, all the analysis that I've seen over the years of voting for New Zealand First, around about half, were normally National Party supporters, uh, supporters but were disenchanted, and around about half were Labour Party who didn't like the extreme left or the, the divisive stuff and thought Winston had a better solution. A lot of people who were sort of uh, believed in his views about Maori being treated the same as everybody else rather than giving special rights. Now, if Labour looks like they're going down the toilet, a big chunk of their voters will have to find another vehicle to go to, and I think a chunk of those will not want to go to National, some will, but I think some of them will also go, I think this will help New Zealand first okay. get past their 5% threshold. That's my view. All right, Christine? Oh, I, I think that's a great insight because there isn't anywhere else for those disenchanted Labour Sorry. voters to go. So mm. I absolutely agree that, that that's highly mm. likely to happen. Okay. And oh, Winston, you never know what's going to happen with him. I don't trust him. He just, look, he just, it's his fault that yeah. all this has happened. <laughs> So yeah. Of course, I don't trust him, but I think he could be back. Yeah. All right. And he is tipping. Uh, as I stand, someone's just sent me a text. Apparently, Winston, who was, uh, we might have on after nine, I'm not sure, and we'll certainly have on next week. Um, Winston is tipping an early election as well. And I think yeah. if anything's come out of this morning is we do need it. We do need, uh, if the Prime Minister can disregard terms... If she can leave early and dip out early, I think the New Zealand electorate, the people of New Zealand, have the right to um, elect a new government if the Prime Minister yeah, is basically, not up we for into a three year, we, we entered into a three-year contract, Sean, and that got broken yesterday. So, you know, the contract's over. We have to go back and, and get a new mandate for whoever's going to control the place from here on in. Yeah.
Yeah, and, and the other thing I guess overall, Christine, I don't blame people who say mean things on Twitter for Jacinda Ardern's resignation. It was at the end. She jumped. She wasn't pushed, eh? Oh, absolutely not. Look, I, I, I don't think that's the reason at all. It's something that's happening internally, and everyone knows now when you're a politician, you get crap thrown at you all the time. It's part of the job. Of I don't think she's of that soft. Yeah. I really don't. I think she could handle that. Jesus, Sean, I wouldn't, have last, I wouldn't have lasted more than my first term. <laughs> If you'd had I wouldn't have lasted more than my first term if I was worried about... If you were at all sensitive. <laughs> hey, guys, thank you. That is a great first free speech uh, Friday. Sorry it was dominated by one topic, but it's quite a good story. Christine Rankin and Morris Williamson, our first free, free speech Friday panel of 2023. Gosh, it's cracking along today, isn't it?